welcome to uh, today's session. Uh, my name is Nasratullah Ghafouri. I'm a PhD candidate in cryptography in Osaka University here in Japan. Uh, I would moderate uh, today's session and our uh, speaker is uh, Wandana Verma. Uh, she's uh, the vice chair of OWS, Global Board of Directors. And she leads diversity initiatives like InfoSec Girls and WomenSec. She's also the founder of InfoSec. So she does lots of good stuff. So uh, we'll have 45 minutes of uh, uh, session, the speech by Ms. Uh, Verma. And we have 10 minutes for Q&A. So if you have any questions for the participants, uh, please uh, post your questions by Whoa platform. We will ask your questions at the end of session. So uh, the chat functionality of Zoom is also disabled for the participants. So if you'd like to chat or if you'd like to comment, please use the Whoa. So let's get started. Uh, when, uh, Verma, would you? Over to you, please start. Thank Sorry, you, thank you so much, Ms. Thank you so much. Let me just go ahead and share my screen and we can get started. Now, before I share my screen, I have a question for everyone. How many of you are aware about supply chains? I think a lot of you, because when we are at OWASP conference, that's something which is very, very important. And uh, it's something becoming very, very big when we are talking about issues that are spanning across. Now, the point comes, how exactly do we deal with them? How exactly uh, these things are changing the uh, scenarios and on top of it, the most important thing comes is, do we even want to talk about them? or How do we want to talk about them? So today in the talk, I would be covering that, some aspects which I understand, which I've seen come across. I am sure there are many more things that you, you are coming across and you want to share with me. I would love to have your feedback after the session. I would love to understand from you what are the questions which actually create a lot of issues and how exactly I can help. So today's talk is all about supply chain risks which are actually trying to Im impact everyone. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a security relations leader at Sneak. And uh, when I'm not working, at Sneak, I am actually contributing to our very lovely community, OWASP, which is Open Web Application Security Project, and we are talking at the conference today. Um, I am actually serving as a chair, and I can proudly say that I am first women, first Asian, first Indian chair. It's an honor for me to be part of such a big community, serve the community, and uh, we would love to have more and more people joining the community, helping out. And if there's any way I can be of help, please do feel free to reach out to me on my LinkedIn, Twitter, anywhere you feel comfortable. And my email address is there on the website. If you go to ovast.org and start learn, checking out lead board members, you would be able to find that. Now, coming back to the topic, we talk about futuristic things. And this is what we feel is a futuristic image of something we really want. But while we are dealing with it, the most important thing comes is that are we uploading some, uh, so are we seeing there is a data which is getting uploaded somewhere? Or are there any things which are uh, impacting our devices? There are times where we've come across that while there is some software getting downloaded, the data getting stored in cloud, which is accessible to a lot of people who should not have access to it. So it's important to understand or what will happen. Everything that we do would be tracking. Now, 
when the tracking happens do you want your child uh, uh, to be monitored or do you think that anything that you speak at home anyone can hear it or for that matter your neighbor can hear it no we do not want that but the most important comes is that in this journey developers play a very very big role the whole supply chain attack system or landscape is actually very very big it is so big that these attacks are coming in and we are fizzling there are times wherein we do not understand how exactly we should react to these attacks and when you are at this talk i am sure you all care about software security and that's why we are discussing it now have you ever thought developers can be a malware distribution system i did not so these incidents like event stream incident which happened in 2018 where there was a backdoor which was implemented or which was part of a package and everyone was using it and executing it and there was a bitcoin miner um, or a, 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 a script which is stealing the bitcoins now think of it wherein this package is started in 2011 over the period of 7 8 years people got busy people wanted to help out now where the volunteers wanted to help out it's a, such a good thing now most important thing comes is that we vet when we implement anything here in this case it was a little miss on that now if you think of as dependencies that how much do we really know about them how much do we know about our own app for me if i have developed my own app on open source like my literally my app is on open source ecosystem so how much do we do i know about it i think this is my app but actually this is the app that i have wherein my code is just the little dot but rest other thing is actually open source as per the research done by a lot of organizations there's an there's a saying 80 to 90% of the code on the internet is open source now when when the research says that think of how much do we understand that like just 10% code or 20% code we are writing rest is all open source how crazy that is it brings us to the point of the understanding the state of open source security but let me take this example wherein this particular vulnerability if you see the java uh, markdown parser vulnerability which was actually reported in 2015 it took one year to fix that vulnerability even more than one year so are we not vulnerable we are and on top of it these kind of breaches they actually keep us awake equifax happened equifax breach happened like ages ago we still talking about it equifax has come back more stronger but again the point comes is that third party libraries third party dependencies are actually creating havoc but they are useful can we deny the fact that we do, we cannot use or we would not use open source in future we can never deny that we are at a community event which is all about open now it also brings us to the point are there any open source tools which are available absolutely there are tons of open source tools available by owasp itself you just need to go to owasp.org go to projects there are wonderful projects so when i started with owasp i knew that it's only or my maybe my understanding was just that owasp is top 10 for a testing guide but over the period i realized it's much more than that there are incredible projects which are there then 
there are so many projects which are documentation projects then tooling then what not lab project so all of these projects actually can help you set up the whole program appsec program to devsecops program in itself we have wonderful leaders who are talking about threat modeling what i can say is that that all these things can actually help us in removing the impact that we have because supply chain risks are big software is eating the whole world and why do i say software is eating the whole world because we are talking about it we want the software to be here and in order to understand the software supply chain came from let's discuss we are today and where we were from software application education mark anderson penned his famous why software is eating the world essay in the wall street journal in 2011 12 years back today the idea that every company needs to become a software security company is considered about almost like a cliche now think of the iphone which is like a few years old in 2011 uber launched publicly in san francisco where i am today which is so get up became testing food delivery in two uh, grab hub became te began testing food delivery in 2014 10 ten years after it launched now in 2015 there are so many things which started changing now we are in 2021 22 now what we really want to see do we still want to see that oh we are testing the softwares no we want it much more than that while the innovation of new users new business around application continues to accelerate security within the modern supply chain has uh, struggle to keep up why when we are talking about all of this we're still struggling and think of this this revolution which is happening earlier we had one premise where we will be building multiple people building of oh, servers infrastructures it ops and what not and now everything is embedded in it that's what we call as a devops devsecops and on top of it what is the sub process of a supply chain so it's actually for example let's take it this manufacturing supply chain so what it says is that we take raw materials it goes to suppliers suppliers actually um have employees who work on it goes to manufacturing goes to warehouse from warehouse trucks pick up and then take it to the consumer it looks so simple that oh okay uh, or or even for that matter food farmer grows the food it goes to uh, the the warehouse from warehouse it goes to the marketers and then it goes to stores stores people pick up and take home again it's simple but then there are many steps in that it this process itself is a big process and it needs a proper security even if a single thing is missed what will happen everything will fall apart so software supply chain which is very similar into the details of the manufacturing supply chain because that's easy to understand in the physical supply chain raw materials people and process come together to create the finished project but each area in subject to supply chain attack i i am a consumer even before something reaches me something can happen it's in the warehouse uh people might rot no uh, people might uh not get exactly what they want from the warehouse either it has become bad or there are other issues now documentation of course is vital 
But what we need to do is we need to have an automated process. And now we started to talk about the whole um, blockchain process so that we have it stabilized. But then we're a long way to go. In the supply chain itself, there are a set of materials, tools, platform, people. In the coding, we have libraries and containers, which again, we code it with, we actually have an ecosystem which sends it to the CICD pipeline. Um, then the code is stored somewhere and the consumer starts using it. Now think of a situation wherein there is a binary which is vulnerable as part of the code itself. Now the code is shipped to everyone and everyone is using it. Is it easy to be vulnerable? Absolutely. It is easy to understand what things are happening. Now, let me tell you a situation. Um, did you hear about SolarWinds attack? Some of us have heard, some of us have not heard. So if we go back and look at this, uh, this particular attack, what happened? There was a binary which was added, which was shipped. Now people started using it and then organizations realized something was not so right and they started reporting. But it again boils down why the focus on the software supply chain is because of these attacks, exploiting the weakest links, which are trying to infiltrate the data from the whole chain. And there is one point which is missed in the chain and anyone can take leverage from it. Now, let's say, my system gets hacked, who knows what data would be lost? How exactly that will be tracked? And now the cases like SolarWinds, Code Core Visual, or Visual Studio Code, which was uh, where uh, somebody got access to Visual Studio Code and they were able to get access to a lot of GitHub accounts. By God's grace, they reported it led, uh, responsibly, but things could have gone in a wrong direction. As per a research from Gartner, which predicts by 2025, 45% of the organization worldwide would experience these attacks, which is such a huge number, like threefold increase from what we were yes, uh, yesterday or probably last year. Now, these software chain attacks were in Visual Studio Code, which is used day in and day out as an IDE, or not just Visual Studio Code, but any IDE, if that has an issue, there are dependency confusions, there are container issues. We want to have APIs, uh, infrastructure, where it is helping us as early as possible. But then these issues keep coming in, keep creating a havoc, keep telling us, let's talk about it. Let's understand what exists and what don't exist. But what is the problem? The problem is that we don't differentiate between supply chain risks and supply chain vulnerabilities. Supply chain vulnerabilities, wherein we can actually, if you get to know, we can fix them. But for the risks, we need to have a proper threat modeling done. Understand where things can go wrong in our particular sector. If we are part of manufacturing, healthcare, concentrating on those minutest details of it, that actually can help us in safeguarding. Understanding those complex, impossible things, which people say, but then we can understand them. And there are times when we have things in our environment and which we don't know. So yesterday there was a discussion here with uh, a few people around cyber uh, supply chain security. Now, the discussion was, everything is fine, but how about data classification? Till the time we don't understand the data classification, we would be in trouble. Till the time we do not maintain these repositories, we would always be in weak, we will always be a weakest link. How many of us do we maintain as bombs, software bill of materials. If you do not have one, OWASP has a wonderful project, which is Cyclone DX. 
I would really urge everyone to at least look at it. It's a wonderful project. So much uh, time has been invested in that project where people are trying to help out organizations, individuals, so that they can take help. And then these supply chain risks can be avoided. It's a great repository. It's an amazing one. And even you can con contribute to it. Now, while I say that these attacks keep happening from affecting the developer IDEs to uh, affecting the CICD pipelines where code core was infected, the simplest of thing which can create issues. And now the tool that we do use day in and day out, if they have bugs, it actually stays there. Or if we have a container which is vulnerable from the get-go, are we not impacted? We are. And that's what happened with um, SolarWinds attack. And then there's more scrutiny which is happening. The White House itself actually released an advisory or a note wherein it specifically said, let's start concentrating on cybersecurity and software security. Now, even the, uh, the leadership of the countries, they are talking about, let's have these uh, things in embedded, which can avoid risks in the whole supply chain. Or we would not be able to fix these issues. We will keep seeing these inherent risks, which is leading to compromising of app now, all of this looks so fancy, but then if one thing in the pipeline gets compromised, it is a risk to, it is a risk to every portion. Now, let me give you an example. Right now, how much of us, uh, how many of us know that how much of a code is, um, is maybe uh, open source or connected to a third party? very few of us are we tracking each dependency no we are not tracking each dependency are we tracking anything and everything which is downloaded from the internet no we are a team of 10 developers one person downloads a library leaves a team do we have the list of what he downloaded or she downloaded or they downloaded no we don't know that's why documentation is very very important that's what can help us in understanding the foundation, understanding how exactly supply chain works and what we can do to make sure that the supply chain attacks are avoided. NIST has released beautiful uh, content about it and so many other frameworks which are there. These frameworks are actually helping us. Be it NIST, be it CSS control, and where we are talking about OWASP. And on top of it, it again helps us in coming to a point where we have software bill of material. Now, I would request you to look at uh, the different things which are there, and especially Cyclone DX, which is helping us. And let's talk about secure code, understanding our own dependencies, containers, S bombs, infrastructure as a code the custom code that we are trying to run. Now, it also brings us to the point that how much risk aware we are because of our dependencies. And SolarWinds is not just the one. The recent example, if I talk about in this whole pipeline, third-party tools, secret management and whatnot, Log4j is a big thing. But especially in December, I was on vacation and suddenly this thing happened. Everyone was talking about it. Why? Didn't we monitor it? Or were we not aware about whether we are using it or not? And especially, this is a logging platform, which most of the organizations were using. Everyone went crazy. But the DevSecOps thing, when we are trying to integrate it, it was integrated core inside of an app. Still, these issues happen. Issues happen. Now, are we going to have less or more software in the future? Are we going to have less or more open source software in the future? We will have more. 
and we will keep seeing these issues. And Logfish is a very well-known Apache logging framework, which impacted million-dollar organizations to the smallest of organizations, but it costed a huge amount of money, which specifically comes out saying that when these things are very prevalent, it, it's important to understand that how exactly regulatory compliance works if something fails. How exactly cloud security controls are there? And why am I talking about cloud security control? Because we have one foot in open source and other foot in cloud. There are third party applications that I'm using, which is leading to remote code executions, to server control failures, to whatnot. And especially controlling these third party risks is a big thing. Because if we don't actually completely look into it, then what will happen? Somebody might be able to deploy malware, ransomware. They would be able to take over our application, which will lead to actually trust issues. And not just that, when these popular platforms keep coming up with zero day issues, it brings us to the point that let's go ahead and have an environment wherein even if when we are sleeping, we can actually understand, okay, this is where the problem is. Let me fix it. It will not happen overnight. For that, we need to have community like OWASP, which actually OWASP make aware people around software supply chain issues, around software security, around DevSecOps. There are wonderful people in OWASP community you can actually take help from. There are projects which are there to help you out. And if you have any issues with any of the project, the understanding, you can reach out to the leaders. They're really helpful. Now, every one of the leader is actually contributing their valuable time to the project. So there's something that you feel needs to be changed, modified. Please do make a pull request to the leaders so that they can actually update it. Everyone is contributing their valuable time. And the mission is to make sure, let's make application security visible to the people and helpful. It also brings me to the point wherein I wanna share that I started a series on my YouTube channel around OWASP Spotlight series, which has around 25 projects. And uh, this year from July, you'll see more and more projects coming up where we are trying to cover each project in 15 minutes. So for dependency vulnerabilities to application vulnerabilities, attackers are trying to target the big ecosystem. Application security is becoming more and more challenging by each passing day. But what we can do is we can understand the cloud security and open source security as a mix. By understanding if we make the security easier, developer friendly and actionable, things can be much more easier. Things can be much more uh, helpful and we can detect these issues as early as possible. While we talk about the standards, we, we talk about the security issues, we talk about how do we address them. It brings us to the point, let's have best practices for open source security, which OWASP is trying to share. And open source is amazing, but let's use it responsibly. Let's have security champions who actually can advocate about it, like we are doing today. But who is a security champion? Now, security champion is the one who is actually helping different teams or the organization in driving security. It can be a project manager, it can be a developer, it can be a tester. It may not be just a security person or the person from a security team. We also, it can also help in having a focal point, understanding how exactly we can move further. I'm sure a lot of us in the call today or in the session today are developers, testers, or even who wants to grow up in the cybersecurity space, who wants to move up the ladder 
who wants to take a step further in application security. Now, when we have so many people from different areas, anyone can be a security champion, which can influence the cycle of CICD. And we can have a software which is built securely. Now, it also brings me to the point that when we have everything which we understand, it's just that we need to stick together those pieces of puzzle and we need to start working towards safe environment. Supply chain attacks are not new. They have been there for ages and they might be there when we grow up or when our kids are gonna grow up. If we don't start looking at the small things which matter the most, wherein we can stitch the security in, where we can bake the security in, where we start trying to talk about shift left or left shift or starting the security early, talking about security by default. This is the small presentation that I wanted to share around supply chain security. There are a few things that we all can do to make sure that supply chain risks are avoided. Thank you so much for listening to me today. If there are any questions, please do post your questions in Roha platform, or you can actually um, share it here. I would love to speak to you. Thank you very much, Vandana, uh, for your very nice presentation. Actually, the internet connection was very good, so we didn't have any problem. Thank you so much. Uh, let me move to the Q&A session, and we will pick questions from our session participants. So uh, the question is, like, we are moving to a uh, a digitize a society. We are trying to uh, digitize our society, each and everything around that. So how this software's uh, supply chain attack could create problems to to future of digitization? What do you think? Uh, while we talk about digitization, it simply means that we have some software or could be on-premise service, we're taking it to the internet. Now, when that is happening, it impar it's imperative that we understand that we are already breached. It brings us to the point telling us that let's track what we have. Let's start there. A lot of times, we don't even know what we have in our house. For example, there are four doors, four windows, and there's a small, uh, space that we have built for our uh, pets to come in. Now, we go on a vacation, we close the door, we close this place for the pet because that's coming along with us. We've closed some of the windows, but this one window which is open, which we didn't realize that it's not closed properly. An attacker comes in and steals the data or steals the value with things. So, how are we going to tackle that? So it simply means, let's start understanding our own data first. Let's classify it. Let's understand what tools we have. Let's understand what dependencies we have, third-party vendors we interact with. Even in the recent cases, there were organizations which were not vulnerable to log pushing, but there were internally third-party vendors which were part of the code, actually they were vulnerable. So does it say that I am not vulnerable? No, but I am connected to them. So I was vulnerable. What it also Im implicitly says that, that anything that we do in our environment, let's keep a track of it. Let's know, get to know that, okay, these are the dependencies would be there. This, these are the connections that we have. These are the software tools that we have. These are the third party tools that we have. These are the connections or endpoints that we have. This is the API that we are using, which we are leveraging from maybe a third party. So understanding that thing 
probably helps in digitization and understanding that, okay, these things are helpful. And on top of it, as I said, if you're setting the whole supply chain ecosystem and you want SBOMs, Cyclone DS is an amazing uh, project which can help you out. Even not just that, there are many other posture management tools that we have or um, the whole uh, DevSecOps ecosystem set up tools that we have that can help you in setting it up, setting up your ecosystem or environment or understanding the, the whole digitization change that, are seen, that we are seeing. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in the second question, probably the last one. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is like the the way like academia or academic society, the way industries and the way government look into the problem is different. Like when it comes to cybersecurity or whatever. So, what do you think? Like, what are the rules of a uh, academic institution, government institution, and industry in order to tackle this problem or in order to somehow address this problem properly. By problem, we mean the supply chain attack. Right. So what I've seen is that now the education is getting bigger and better in this area, uh, especially the discussions that I'm seeing around these days, um, wherein government educational institutions to the organizations to a, per a person who's just a software developer they've started to talk about these issues and let's start there that now we're talking about it there are times when we never spoke about these issues and they keep kept creeping in so especially government is actually trying to emphasize that let's try and fix these issues so that we can have safe environment for every one of us. Educational, educational institutions who are trying to give the theoretical knowledge to the people who are actually ground up. But now they want the industry experts to come in and share their knowledge so that the people or the students who come out of the college, they know bits and pieces of it, which they can stitch together and start using it. During the pandemic, educational institutions to everyone hit so badly. Kids were getting homeschooled. There's still places where kids are getting homeschooled, colleges. Everyone was studying online. Even today, if we're talking about an OVASP conference, it was supposed to happen in Dublin, but we are virtual, understanding the scenarios. So these things can happen. Now, it brings us to the point how sustainable we can be how exactly we can meet again virtually. So it also emphasizes that understanding of the topic itself is first important, which, we, which every organization is trying to do. Addressing is the second. First, understanding. A lot of times we don't understand what is the problem and we say, oh, we need to handle it because others are facing. So that's important to do. So probably my take is that we are talking about it, we are trying to move towards it. So that's actually will take us slowly towards solving the problem. That's more important. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's a very interesting area to talk in. I have, even personally, I have so many questions to talk and discuss and probably in our next opportunities. Uh, so we are running out of time. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was amazing to speak here. And I'm looking forward to connecting with all of you. Please do feel free to reach out to me anytime. For sure. Thank you very much.